Hello and welcome, friends, to Pillars of Eternity. So, we were about to play to this one. I took the liberty of rereading everything. And... I noticed this little paragraph. Life, uh, leave every note of life song. Yeah, the goddess of arts, was it called? Your words seemed to ring in the air, your voice rendered melancholic and living by some unseen art. You shut your eyes to pray. As you wait in darkness, the world around you changes. You feel sunlight bright and warm on your face. A light breeze carries music to your ears. The vivid and the sensations feel you somehow know they are not real. You look around and find yourself standing in an open-air temple built on a mountain summit. It's filled with elves, orlans, and assorted with other kith. Ringing the entire scene is a fragile of trees. There are vendors beneath you... Uh, branches filled with birds of all different colors, shapes, and sizes. Everyone singularly absorbed in the particular pursuit, and Orland sits in the cavern. A paintbrush is his hand, and jars of green, blue, and yellow um, pigments at his feet. Nauf and Nawa standing on the side, locked in conversation, the expressions dancing with delight, still other scribbles uh, standing poetry in the crude sketches on the surface paper, losing themselves in a delicate miniature of lines and uh, syllables. You feel breeze again, and two elves basking in sunlight shiver. The largest group grunts in the air of the temple. They sing lush chaotic harmony composed of several complementary melodies. On the drift towards the singer in all wind uh, once and twelves, as if buffered by gusts of wind, and perhaps all a song. A ripple presence uh, throughout the trees. You think it's the wind, but the cheering charges to screeching. Hundreds of birds take to the skies, all headed in the direction. Away. Okay. Away is not exactly a direction. Not one direction. Have you ever met a series of cheering birds calling a folk scrums into the air? This is bad. Something has uh, them poked, but uh, they won't tell me what. Then again, I think I mispronounced my bird song and probably called them incontinent. Okay. David trees glees of the trees, just barely distracted from the activities, but the wind picks up scattered their uh, pages of poetry and art, rippling the song from their lips. They look sweet, and you f uh, follow their gaze. A dark shape blows out the sun. You can't tell what it is, but it unfolds and expands. It seems to fill the sky, the wind, the roars, or the summit. That explains the birds. Before you can flee, a shadow falls upon the teleport, begins to stain the corner, and spreads upon the black trunks. It reaches the nearest kid, black bird Orlan. Darkness swallows her, leaving only a puff of smoke in her place. The two elves uh, that you saw earlier, a man and a woman, flee. You get a brief image of them huddling in the shadow of a mountain. They seem to see you, too, and uh, they reach out, calling silently after you. The others, however, seem frozen. As the shadow advances, they likewise uh, vanish one by one. Riven Gale scatters their ashes, and the charred remains of their creation. Songs of joy turn to screams of agony. What purpose? What lesson could possibly lie beneath this uh, destruction? You look up again how, um, at the source of shadow. The eclipse sun formed blinding current around the thing. You can't make out any details. You can, however, feel heat. Restore my tempo. You look down and find yourself standing next to Helia's shrine in Tier Eron. Your pose still races. Your skin is damp with sweat from your strange encounter. Man, those mushrooms are real bad, aren't they? Okay, next. Let's say this one. Pray to Bereth. Okay, I'm going to see what Bereth wants to hear. Okay, found it. Let's see. Uh, there is life and death and death and life. I'm pretty sure that was something I saw. All things can be reforged. There is life and death, and death and life. Yeah, there it is. There is a rippling shift in the air around you, as if some unfelt wind has changed. 
bring you unexpected warmth. You feel the peculiar weight of an unseen presence, and one of eyes open upon you. You kneel and pray to Barrett. Even while your eyes are closed, you see a road that seems to stretch on forever. The stars will overheat the clockwork rotation of, of uh, constellations, disappearing over the horizon to your left, only to rise on your right. You try to take uh, to make out the details other side of the road, but your eyes can't seem to focus one moment. You think you see a meadow blackened with the mist and another sheer canyon. Wells, for just an instant, you even see a waves leaping at the edge of your road. When you uh, where you st uh, to step into the shivering landscape, you feel certain you would only end up back on the road. You know there is vision. Back dirt feels from beneath your feet. Night air cool on your face. You're walking, your feet seem to carry you forwards of their own accord. Something looms ahead of you. As you get closer, you see two stone figures that look strangely uh, familiar. What, the skeleton figures that they described? Remember the door to Kerak and the two figures grab into the mountain next to it. One looks vaguely male, another vaguely female. Yep, that's it, alright. Only a thin layer of flesh covered their skeletal bodies, with twist face of doorway beneath them. The doorway, however, is not what uh, you saw in the ruins. It's the skull gasping jaws. And as you look on, his, uh, its open mouth seems to glow. The arms of two stones, scopo, are swept towards the mouth, enter you in. Enter a skull's mouth. The road continues throughout the mouth to another shifting landscape surrounded by stars. As you pass through it, you see an identical doorway. In the distance, a dwarven man stands near it, unmoving. You turn and look behind you, only to see a skull gate you just passed facing you. An old woman waits in the road, like a dwarf, she stands still. Let's approach the woman, of course. Dwarves. Huh. You start towards her. There is something unusual about the way she stands. She's too still. When you get closer, you see that her legs turn into a slender trunk, and it places her feet are granted twisted roots. She lifts her face to invisible sun. Her long golden hair is the color of autumn leaves, and as you uh, look more closely, you realize that her head is actually covered with tendrils and vines. You just saw that when we entered, do you know? Sporting brilliant yellow leaves, each glimpsed with the essence of an entire soul. She gives you a perfect smile as, um, as you look on, leaves slowly fall um, from her head and settle at her roots. They melt into a pad beneath her, almost immediately new leaves strung place of the old ones. She reaches towards you, still swelling as roots spawn from her fingertips. Her outstretched arms bar the pad. Come. Craft your soul to the golden grove. Take her hand. Her roots twist around your fingers. As they do, uh, they grow rigid and cold. Her outmond arm petrifies as the trough stone breaks overtake her flesh. She can only look on in horror. You break away from her uh, brittle grasp. Her feet are rooted in place, but she twists and wrists as if there is uh, to flee her own dying limb. The petrification reaches her shoulder and spreads uh, down her body, freezing in the painful arc creeps up her neck and she throws her uh, face skyward like a drawing swimmer. The grayness uh, covers her face, freezing her grasp in stone. Now she is still, lifeless. You can continue past her. Only uh, golden leaves on her head remain untouched as you watch uh, they fall one by one path below. The shiver and shimmer essence fade from them. You will lift your gaze and see the dwarven man standing further down the road. Let's approach the man then. I guess that's the only choice we have. You continue down the road towards him. He looks up as you approach, but you can't tell if he's looking at you or through you. His face is smooth but uh, flaccid, as if the flesh has detached from his muscles underneath. Ew. As you look on his face begins to change, wrinkles uh, crack and corrupt of his eyes. His mouth sticks curved uh, deep lines from his nose to the covers of his lips. His jaws sag and the loose flesh pangs like a doth. He raises his scoped hand. They're covered in blood. He lifts them to his face and sneers himself from his nearly seized forehead. 
uh, to the wall through his neck. As a message dark sticks fluid into the skin, a flash winkles the spear. The hanging folds recede, and his flesh tightens as if reddening his skull. He lifts his head, and this time you know he's looking at you. Her renowned face looks like a mask, artificially smooth and still. Behind its back, eyes are torn, hungry pits howling like empty mouths of skulls. Come, make your sacrifice to Ekon Noi. His uh, body blocks the path. He extends the bloody hand towards you. Of course, take the hand. It's covered in bots. What can possibly go wrong? Come on, take the hand. Chop, chop. You grab his hand, but the skin grips too early, uh, easily under your grip. As you try to pull away, you hear a noise like Jared Cowan staring. His skin spills forward long uh, seam that brings his arm and stretch his leg of his body, but rushes forth such quantities that you don't uh, can't imagine there was ever anything else in him. Sure enough, as the dwarf employs the blood collapses his descendant husk, the blood in the path gleams with thousands of souls worth of essence, the essence a warm traffic shining flowing into the night sky, only now that he is dead can you continue onwards. The blood pool around your feet and the voice echo around the blood nearly more than a whisper of the breeze. Return to the wheel. You look up and see the skull gate ahead of you. A guard of the dear everyone wa wink through the open mouth. Come on. A new quest, of course. A servant of death. So what, we have to serve off those gods? Well, that seems like a... Weird stuff considering that gods wage war against each other all the time. Okay, who is this doofus? Rimgand. Okay, let's seek out Rimgand and I'm gonna get away. Okay, there we go. Rimgrand. And it only showed them the symbol of Rimgrand. The bone white arm from Skull. It's in the engrafting god of gold. Symbol of death and doom in every culture. Okay, let's see what uh, we can tell this guy. I think on the view ocean sorrow now, all I fans, stillness. No. I know this one. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm gonna move you here, you're gonna move here for now. Bone white alcar scope found craft within the most ancient Angwen ruins, the symbol of death and doom in every culture. Body is not just dead, but all manifestation of collapse. Be they fame, plague, or simple bad luck. Remember, his primal god, silent in curse of death itself. He makes himself known with his passing, not proclamation. When the beast of winter steers. Hmm. Was there anything about winter? Where he can? No. Answer without a question? Nope. Nope. All life ends in stillness. Maybe this one. No. Struggling off fundamental nature. Not sure about this one. No. Survival begins with straight from within. Mm, I don't think so. Things can be reforged? No. I am leaning upon this one. All life ends in stillness. Let's see if we're gonna find this paragraph. All life ends in stillness. There you go. You feel a sudden gust of wind of cold air as if shrine were bursting into one real life. The frigid wind cuts through you like a sharpened blade, and darkness encroaches upon the edge of your sign. You kneel and close your eyes as you pray the blackness fades into white. The howling wind fills your ears, the vision that slowly resolves itself on board frozen plains. You see a protection of elves and distance, practically fading into the emerging from uh, the whiteness. They struggle over snow blanks, their head drawn against driving winds. As they track past you, one man handles in first turns his head. He had the north frost, and the frost heaven reached you. Before you can answer, he lumbers ahead, you follow the currents, and in a couple of minutes, you come to a wall of ice. 
disappears in the pale emptiness overhead that stretches as far as you can see in the either direction. The old stop in front of the mirror's mood section that framed with a trample door. It seems somehow trainer, uh, thinner than the rest of the wall. You can't see what the other side, but uh, the replication code emanates from within. The old spool pickaxes shows from their second uh, seal skin packs and begin hacking at the smooth ice. Then implements flying throughout the air in, shiv in uh, swift shining arcs. Through they throw their bodies into the labor, not one of them so much as scratches the polished ice. Yet, with each blow, something below in the distance. Hey, you might want to hold off on that. But that calling wind seems to shower up his voice, okay? The oaths hack away, seemingly oblivious of the fearless forward. The tremors under your feet. The snow has risen to your knees. Your legs feel frozen in the drifts. Just wait. You watch as the elves continue work on the ice. They pay no heed to the numbering roar of the numbering wind. Their movement, however, grandly slow. They labor at the ice at absolute sluggish movement until they finally freeze in place. Some mid swinging, the others prepare for the next blow. You touch the elf nearest to you, the crumbles into a mood of snow. A final gale blows past scattered the remains of the elves in the chaotic flurry. You notice a single spider web crack in the smooth barrier. It is the only thing that mars in the perfect surface of the ice. Whatever it or whatever is on the other side of the strange doorway feels strongly at you. Only when you look back and see the pa uh, the parallel glaciers trail behind your le uh, legs in the snow, do you realize how strong the pool is. You know, if those gods can tell me what my past life was, I was going to be very grateful. Won't have to chase that guy Theos for other reason than just to kill him. A deep whisper carries from the crack, quiet as if shakes grounds beneath your feet. My end comes to all things in time, seal the frost veil beneath, increase the pilgrims and practice of rain guard. Plug the hole with handful of snow. You feel your hand with snow and show it in the cracks. It hardens instantly, where a rime grows over the smooth surface of the frozen doorway, flushing it with the rest of the wall. When you take your hand away, a perfect crystal of ice remains in your palm. As you examine the crystal, the vision around you fades, but the unmelted shard of ice remains in your hand. Okay. Well, that episode was filled with Nonsense. Seriously. No god is judged by other gods, I guess. So it's something like the Greek pantheon, pantheon this religious things, I would say. Not something like the religious wars. Which is ironic, considering that uh, we have Renaissance weapons here. I love this sword. It looks so cool. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna end this episode here. And I'm gonna see you all next time. Till then, goodbye.